the way to find out the truth is to negate everything that is false. And basically the entire monetary system as a whole right now is an illusion which is destroying our civilization. So, what is the actual value of money besides being really convenient to trade for goods? Inherently, you can't eat it, you can't burn it for fuel, you can't use it as a cool toy or something. It has zero value inherently inside that piece of paper. And it promotes an infinite growth paradigm at the same time because interest on debt is always expanding and the actual money in circulation is always diminishing because people take out loans and they get into debt and they're always scrambling to catch up but it's always the rich people that get the value from the money through the interest system so that's insane because if it if the money debt is always growing, but the circulation is the actual money in circulation is always diminishing, it'll inevitably inevitably lead to bankruptcy and scarcity. Money also leads to corruption and inequality in the civilization as a whole. And there's numerous peer reviewed studies out there that say inequality leads to things like total loss of trust in your fellow man, severe psychological trauma severe depression, think like mental disorders, just because the society is so unequal that nobody really knows why it is the way it is. So what can we actually agree upon that's independent of ideology or things like that? I think we can all can agree that there's a energy crisis happening right now and it's getting worse and worse by the day. The price of energy is always going up it seems and if you, know, if you know what the word peak oil means you understand that no matter what we do there's always peak and it always goes down. And we may have peaked in 2008, we don't, we're not really sure, but that's because all the information for how much oil is actually out there is actually kept under wraps by either the governments or the oil companies that produce that oil. I think we can all agree that there's an ecological crisis at the same time because species are collapsing, the deforestation of the Amazon and other, other forests is accelerating, it seems, for monoculture. And we can also agree that everybody here needs food, water, shelter, and medical aid, no matter what, to live. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what do we do about this? We need to technologically unify the entire planet. Everything that affects our physical reality in terms of engineering designs or software or anything that affects our physical reality should be free for anybody to see online, open source, everything. All over the world, no holds barred. <laughs> because if, like the government and software companies right now are trying to d delay that from happening by either introducing legislation or, or trading um, intellectual property. Google just had to buy $12 billion of intellectual property from, I think, Motorola for, I don't know, cell phones and stuff. But what actually, like, hap what actually got traded? Just some data. Maybe a couple of million dollars worth of hard disks or hard drives, but $12 billion of money just evaporated because two companies arrived at the same technological conclusions. It's nobody's fault, it's just the system, right? We need to think of a systemic way to think of all our resources. Nobody owns the Pacific Ocean. That's the same mentality that we should have for the minerals and biology of the entire Earth. Nobody owns any section of it. Not me or you, it's all just one. We need to eliminate unnecessary production of useless shit like tanks and missiles and bombs and unnecessary pharmaceuticals, just things that really don't, nobody really needs. And we should look at real visionaries from the past that went far beyond the scope of anybody could ever imagine, such as the works of Jacques Fresco, Buckminster Fuller, and Nikola Tesla.
because they had real, real genius. And we should have the idea that we should have access to our pro access instead of property. Like, I'm not saying you should give up, give up your clothes and your personal effects, but like nobody actually needs a car all the time. You just need to use a car when you actually need it. But there's right now hundreds and thousands of cars sitting in a driveway doing nothing right now. Because we all have the idea, or most of us do, that you each need a car and we each need our own electric drill or our own really expensive video camera thing. But that's just a theory. So this is just a train of thought. This is not a utopia, and there's no absolutes. It's just a scientific method being applied to our civilization as a whole. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You gotta So, this is called The Dream That Must Be Interpreted by Rumi. This place is a dream. Only a sleeper considers it real. Then death comes like dawn, and you wake up laughing at what you thought was your grief. But there's a difference with this dream. Everything cruel and unconscious done in the illusion of the present world, all that does not fade away at the death waking, it stays. And it must be interpreted. All the mean laughing, all the quick sexual wanting, all those torn coats of Joseph, they change into powerful wolves that you must face. The retaliation that sometimes comes now, the swift payback hit, is just the boys game to what the other will be. You know about this circumstance here. It's full castration there. And this groggy time we live in, this is what it's like. A man goes to sleep in the town where he has always lived, and he dreams he's living in another town. In that dream, he doesn't remember the town he's sleeping in his bed. He believes the reality of the dream town. The world is that kind of sleep. The dust of many crumbled cities settles over, us, settles over us like a forgetful doze. But we are older than those cities. We began as mineral. We emerged into plant life and into the animal state, and then into being human. And always we have forgotten our former states, except in the early spring, when we slightly recall being green again. That's how a young person turns toward teacher. That's how a baby leans towards the breast, without knowing the secret of its desire, yet turning instinctively. Humankind is being led along an evolving course through this migration of intelligences. And though we seem to be sleeping, there is an inner wakefulness that directs the dream that will eventually startle us back to the truth of who we are. Thanks.